What's going on everybody? Welcome back. I'm Bryden Strider and we're going back into Beacon Pines today. It's been a little bit, but I want to get further into the story to see what other endings we can unlock. So hang tight. Here we go. He knows too much. The end. Wait, no, this isn't the end. I know there's still much more. Somehow this went wrong. Okay, let's try something else. Windows to the soul. All right, so we got those. Let's go back to the very first playthrough that we did where he came across the hazmat suit guy and try to struggle. This is a story about struggle. This is a story about struggle. Luca could hear a machine humming somewhere nearby. He felt around wildly, searching for something, anything that could help. His hands found a hard object, maybe a tile. He yanked it free, lifting the cold stone. Let me go! Luca swung the tile as hard as he could at the shape that still held fast to his leg. He heard the crack of glass as the stone hit the assailant's mask. With a muffled yelp, the hand let go. Luca was free and scrambled to the door. Got run. He never looked back once on the long run home. Chapter three. Everything's fine. The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. I finished starring a mess of jam last night. Uh huh? So that'll need to get delivered into town today. Okay. So what did you and Rolo get up to yesterday? Oh, Rolo had things to do, so I just have sort of poked around town. I've set the jam down by the front door. There's two batches to drop off. Hmm? One for Mr. Tolliver at the bag and wag. Another for Miss Fratelli at the diner. Oh, and Mr. Nuncreed? He said he wanted some more. I suspected as much. Yes, he seems to have taken a particular interest in my jam. There are some extras in the basket for that enthusiastic gentleman. Uh, we know Mr. Nuncreed isn't the uh, friendliest neighbor in town. He knows what's going on. Just make sure Fratelli and Tolliver get the ones on top. No problem. I'll with you now while the day is still young. Okay, let's go deliver some jam. We know she knows something too. Hello. It's Juniper Hartford. Before you hang up, just hear me out. I have a business proposition. The simple matter is we both have the same problem that needs solving. Very well, we can meet tonight. Hmm. Very interesting. Rolo! Okay. Sorry about yesterday. Roxy can be so annoying. But good news. No more boring chores for me today. Did you make it to the old Valentine warehouse? So, what did you find? Give me the dirt. Something happened. There was someone else there. What? Who was it? Was it aliens? I knew it would be aliens. No. Zombies? No. Alien zombies? What else could it possibly be? Rolo. We've got to deliver these into town first. We can catch up after. Oh. Is it a whole thing? It sounds like a whole thing. Yeah, we shouldn't talk about it here. Meet me at the treehouse tonight. I'm not sure what this treehouse is that you speak of. Meet me at Mission Control. Roger that, Space Cadet. Jeez. Let me 
Am I going the right way? I never know if I'm going the right way. Okay, yeah, we're in town. So we gotta go. Woo! Mr. Tolliver and Fratelli. One's at the diner and the other, I don't remember. I don't remember where the other one's at. So the diner is up this way. Yeah, last chance diner. Well, if it isn't my favorite little jam runner. Hey, Mrs. Fratelli. Look at you. She leaned forward and pinched Lucas' cheek. You're all skin and bones. Is your granny not feeding you? She is. It's just... I understand. You know, I taught your mama how to cook back in the day. You may not even remember, but you and her used to help out in the diner. See that picture over there? That's you helping your mama back in the day. So cute running around your little apron taking over. The whole situation just breaks my heart. What happened with Eleanor? Break. I've got a feeling she's out there somewhere yearning to be with you again. A few things in this world can keep a mother from herself. Luca shifted the basket uncomfortably. Oh yes, let's see here. Mrs. Fratelli lifted the cloth and inspected the jam. Ah, they even have my name on them. How thoughtful. She carefully lifted out her jars of jam. You tell your grand hello for me, Luca. Will do. Luca squinted at the faded photo of him and his mom at the diner. Memories of that day came flooding back. So, <laughs> whoops. I'm ready to help, Mom. All right, little buckaroo. It's up to us to feed these folks while Miss Fratelli's out. I gotta deal with the inventory before I can start cooking. Do you think you can handle taking some orders in the meantime? Yes, Mama. Hey, Roxy. Luca? I'm helping. Wow, hopefully your work ethic will rub off on Rolo. What can I get you? Mm, I'm not really feeling like a burger. How about a chicken sandwich with bacon on top? Coming right up. Ooh, you have to make the food? Nice. Succulent. Uh, she wants a chicken. <gasps> Chicken sandwich tender, chicken tenders with bacon on top. Nice. That's cool how you make the food. Here you go. I call it the Love Me Tenders. Nice. That is cool. That's a cool way to, to cook. Aren't you a little young to be waiting tables? Why, yes. Yes, I am. I'm just helping out. Uh, my father had me hustling when I was your age as well. Father always says, children are to be sales, pulling a family ever forward. That doesn't sound very fun. There's plenty of time for fun. For instance, father and I always make time to have lunch together once a month. Luca glanced at the empty seat across from Gus. Should I come back? Oh no, it turns out father was too busy to have lunch today. Aw, I'll just go ahead and eat alone. Oh. The silver lining is without him around, I can have my usual. A nice stack of cold cuts topped with a pile of sloppy chili. Alright, cold cuts and sloppy chili coming up. Get that chill cold cuts and the sloppy chili. Yeah, here you go. Here you are. Cold cuts with steaming hot chili on top. I call it the hot and cold. That's perfect, thank you. All right, we got another one. Get Zooks, they shrunk the white staff. Jeff slapped the table and gave Luca a toothy grin. How's your pops doing? He's been pretty busy these days. I know the feeling. Tell him the fishing rod he ordered should be ready next week, will ya? Sure thing. I've been in the mood for something sweet. You got a burger that can satisfy a sweet tooth? A sweet burger? Yeah, dump it off with some grilled cactus. Grilled cactus? The heart what the heart wants what the heart wants. Or the heart wants what it wants. Alright, alright, alright. 
this is weird. You got some sweet, sweet stuff. Indulgent with some of that cactus. That's weird. That is one weird sandwich. Here's your order. I call it the sweet and stabby. Ha! Now that's a burger with bite. That was weird. <laughs> Looks like we're missing a few things. Why don't you run out and grab some more ingredients? Okay, I'll be right back. Oh, that was cool. They need more of that in this game. You're still sitting alone, huh? If I can just be left alone, young Mr. Van Horn. Oh, sure. Sorry to bother you. It's just that. Mr. Kerr has asked me to make the opening speech at the festival. Being mayor and all, you might expect me to be a charism charismatic speaker. I can't talk. Apparently, I'm not a charismatic speaker at all, either. So, my bad. The truth is, I'm terribly nervous. I really don't think I'm cut out for this sort of thing. Cut out for being mayor or for public speaking? Both, I suppose. I never really chose any of this. It's more of a duty to my family. For our legacy. That sounds like a heavy burden. As for the festival, just speak from your heart. I'm sure it'll be great. I'm sure it will. Can I go to the kitchen? Can I make the most stuff? I want to make the most stuff. Ah. Don't let me. Gotta deliver this other jam. Alright, where we gotta go? I don't remember. Oh, that's not what I'll do. I don't even remember who Mr. Tolliver is. This is not Mr. Collar. This is... You can tell those jerks it doesn't matter how many boxes they pile up. I ain't moving. <laughs> yeah, I ain't Mr. Collar. <laughs> what is Mr. Collar? Here? Or is one of these Mr. Collar? No, I don't think that's... That's Nunfried, whatever his name is. Let's just double check. Who's this guy again? I don't, I don't remember who this guy is. Mr. Wild, I trust you have time to chat. Eris Valentine, or, oldest of Sharper sorry. Valentine's children and heir to the Valentine fortune, had a way of making questions seem like demands. Certain. What seems to be the problem? Mr. Wilder had learned to assume that if he was hearing from Eris, it was because she had taken issue with something he had put in the paper. I can help but notice. The different page of this morning's paper was consumed with stories about this silly festival. Well, yes. That is news of the day. But there was no mention of the museum, nor the foundation through which it was endowed. I'm sorry, Miss Valentine. My readers are more so interested in this town's future, rather than any one family in particular. There was a time, Mr. Wilder, when the goings on of my family was the only thing this camp cared about. Well, things change, ma'am. And you know, change is as dangerous if you finish that thought. I will make that monocle a permanent fixture of your anatomy. My apologies. Good day, Valentine. Did I give you the impression this conversation was finished? Mr. Wilder averted his gaze and began to polish his monocle. Well, good day, Mr. Wilder. Jeez. Tolliver ain't there. Where is Tolliver? I don't know. Tolliver. I think this might be Mr. Tolliver. Huddled at his counter, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining apples. Yeah, he was one of the three that met in the woods that night. Him, Granny, and 
the lady from the diner we just went to. More accurately, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining one apple. Hello? Hey. With a yelp, Mr. Tolliver fumbled the apple, flailing at the air as it fell. Oh, sorry. No, 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 no. Oh, no bother, no bother. He leaned forward and lowered his voice. No, 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 no. I see you have something for me. Yeah, Grin had some jam I'm supposed to give you. He leaned in a bit further. Jam? Yeah, these ones on top. She wrote your name on them. Mr. Tolliver leaned back, speaking loud enough for anyone to hear. Ah, yes! The jam! Thank you so much for delivering this jam to me. He reached forward and snapped up the jars of jam, giving Luca a little wink. I shall put it on my store shelves. Post haste. Okay, I should finish my deliveries. Uh -huh. Of course. Uh -huh. Of course. He leaned in for a final whisper. Of course. <laughs> He's a weirdo. That's okay. We're all weird in our own little ways, right? We've all got our quirks. I'm definitely weird. I mean, as you can see, I am definitely weird. I just realized you probably didn't see half my face when I'm doing that. My bad. <laughs> all right, Mr. Nunfried, 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 Nunfried. I got some jam for you, Mr. Nunfried. Look up, you see, chip. Well, aside from being on delivery duty, it's a nice day. Mr. Nuncreed eyed Luca for a moment, then nodded in agreement. I suppose it is. I don't trust him. He's probably got a hazmat suit. So, do you want your jam? Oh, right. Usually Juniper drops those off herself. I guess she's busy today. Anyway, this is my last delivery for the day. Let me, let me fix this so you can see, you can see Mr. Nuncreed. Alright, you can see him now, it's better. Nuncreed snatched the basket from Luca. I'll look for the basket until the next time I see your grand. <laughs> Weirdo! Hey you! Anchovies or pineapple? Why? Don't think. Just answer. Pineapple? Why? How old are you? Twelve? Perfect, follow me. Who are you? Anyone ever tell you you ask too many questions? Just try to keep up, okay? Okay. What just happened? Well. Hey, what a crazy coincidence. Here's my new friend I was just telling you about. Oh, that's wonderful. Yep, we just hit it off. Oh, really? Get this, his favorite pizza topping in the whole world is pineapple. Oh, um, what is your new little friend's name? Beck locked eyes with Luca. The look on her face was equal parts expectant and desperate. Luca Van Horn, nice to meet you. I'm Nelly, and this is I... Ilona. Beck gave Luca a quick nudge. Oh yeah, Beck, tell me all about you. Already feels like we've known each other for years. So you both can stop obsessing about me making friends. Oh darling, we never doubted you. It's just that for children with fewer than five close friends, the probability of a stunted development doubles. Well, one down, four to go, I guess. What Nelly means is that we just want this move to be as easy on you as possible. You can relax. A friend has been friended. This calls for a celebration. Luca, you must join us for dinner tonight. Dinner? Wow. Another coincidence. I actually already asked him and he said he would love to. <laughs> it's just wonderful. In that case, we should pick up some groceries. You two don't get into too much trouble now. Well, well, well. Find ourselves in a little predicament, because we're supposed to meet Rolo later. Wow, I can't believe that worked. Thanks a ton. You're welcome. 
I owe you one. Our house is a little college cottage next to the big mansion place. Wait, you live on the Valentine Estate? Yeah, that's the spot. Meet me by their big creepy gate. Don't be late. All right, I'm back to square one on the whole friend grift. <laughs> Great, see you there. Uh-oh, I hope we... Are we going to have to... Uh, I thought maybe it would give it... Make, make us make the decision. Uh, I got to go meet Beck. Have dinner with Beck. What are you doing here? Good morning, Jeff. 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 What's so good about it? Another day further down the tubes, if you ask me. Come on now, it's not all bad. The festival's coming up. <laughs> the festival. Oh man, now I used to put up on cockamini, cockamami, cock, cockamami <laughs> shindigs all the time. Where did that get us? I know the voice is not the same that I used before, but now that I'm seeing it up close with the missing teeth, yeah, I, I had to change the voice. It is what it is. Well, it's Perennial Harvest putting on this one, and they're doing it for the whole town. As far as I see it, the difference between the old Valentine Company and this new Perennial Harvest outfit. Jeff dug through his pockets for a bit. It's the difference between this empty soup can and his brown banana. But those are both garbage. Exactly. <laughs> oh man, that's, that was kind of funny. He's got attitude. Where's the gate? Oh yeah, I guess it's this one. You know, the fancy path. So who all lives in that house? Eris and Gus Valentine grew up there. And Solomon moved back in a few years back. Or moved in a few years back. That creepy little kid in the vest? <laughs> that sounds like the lawn. So there's three people living in that huge thing? But a bunch of shady stuff happens all the time in a place like that. Not really. The Valentines pretty much keep to themselves. So it's empty and boring. Pretty much. What a waste. My mom says it used to be way busier back before Sharper died. Before the fowl harvest. Okay, that's like the fifth time someone mentioned this fowl harvest thing. And you all use that same ominous tone. Eventually you're going to explain to me how that harvest got all fouled up. And we can't keep my parents waiting anymore. This way. Every to cottage. Most kids would have just ditched me by this point. Why are you still here? You look like you can use some help. You know what, Luca? You're not so bad. Let's get through this as simply as possible. Just eat, smile, and nod. Fun. Great. Whatever you do, don't bring her. Don't bring up their work. I think I can handle that. Beck took a long breath, then gave a firm nod. There goes nothing. Chapter four. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we made it to chapter four in Beacon Pines. Um, so we went back a little bit. We took the initial storyline where Rolo wasn't uh, kidnapped. Um, he just had to go home and do his chores. And we ran into the How Fat Food guy. Then we met Beck and we're going to dinner. So that's where we're going to leave off now. Chapter four, we'll see what happens. We're getting a little bit further. And we'll see uh, if we run into another bad ending. So make sure you press the notification bell so you know when the next video is up. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Until the next one, I'll be seeing you.